This video is looking at a certain part of Earth's geologic history, which is the start, the formation, the point where the Earth began and formed. This is called the Hadean Eon, and it's the first eon in the long stretch of geologic history. I'm looking at the events that happened and characteristics that happened to kind of shape our planet to what it is today. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So to begin with, the Hadean Eon, or however you say it, is the starting point for Earth's history, the formation, the point where the Earth was, was formed and developed as a terrestrial planet, the third rock from the sun. And this kind of began about 4.54 billion years ago, literally as the sun was forming and kind of coalescing and group in all the rocky materials close to the sun, the heavy elements, to form the four terrestrial planets, Earth being one of them. And it lasted about 500 million years to about 4 billion years in Earth's history. Now, the word Hadean derives from the word Hades, which is the Greek god of the underworld, kind of depicting this very ancient world, this very different world, this raw, kind of like hellish environment where there's magma and fire and and different kind of environment than what we expect or see today. And this equates for about 13% of the Earth's history in terms of the current time. So even though it's not a large percentage of time for the Earth's history, about 13%, about 500 million years, it is an important eon to discuss because obviously it's the formation, it's the accretion, it's the initial initiation of our planet, the formation through gravity, through the addition of rocky materials to form this planet that we call home. And various events happen during this shorter time that really just impact our planet for the whole length of its history. For example, the formation of the moon around 4.2 billion years ago, the fair impact the hypothesis of an impact and how the moon was formed through this gigantic collision and that is, uh, it kind of explains why the moon's so close and the, and the geology of the moon and the orbital rotation of the moon and the effect the moon has on our planet both in rotation, the axis and of course the tides and water. Then we have the point of liquid water. So even though the Earth was forming and the temperature and the magma, there is still evidence of water, liquid water, on the surface during that time. Again, this evidence is suggested by scientists. Again, not, not guaranteed or proven, but there's a strong suggestion that was liquid water present on the Earth during this time. We also can calculate the age of the Earth based on various atoms and rock isotopes that we can look at in terms of radiometric dating and work backwards from there. So we found the oldest crystals or atoms with the isotopes, mostly uranium isotopes, that are in the zircon crystals. We found these in Australia and they date between 4.2 to 4.4 billion years. So based on that evidence, we can work back and suggest the Earth is around 4.5 billion years, as in a case of it took about 300 million years for the Earth to cool down enough that these zircon crystals can start the ticking time of radiometric dating so we can work back from there and find the absolute age of the Earth. And finally, towards the end of this eon, towards the 4 billion year mark, there was a large amount of meteorite and asteroid impacts and collisions on the Earth called the late bombardment stage, where the orbital periods and direction of the asteroid belt, which is between Mars and Jupiter, and Jupiter itself and the orbital and gravitational pull of Jupiter kind of caused a lot of the asteroid belt to impact both, I'm sure, Mars and, of course, Earth. And this was a period of constant bombardment, <laughs> collisions from asteroids on the Earth, which, again, could have brought in different elements into the Earth from these asteroids, from these space rocks, including li liquid water. And we have the formation of our core, our solid iron nickel core and the liquid outer core due to the movement and density differences in the elements 
of our planet, from the heaviest elements to the lighter elements, like hydrogen and helium that go into the atmosphere and escape into space, the heavier ones kind of sank into the middle through gravity and formed our core. This then caused a knock-on effect with the outer core, which is liquid and superheated through the, the accretion and decay of radioactive materials, is going to form our magnetic field around our planet, which again would create this shield for the solar winds, which would then allow more of the atmosphere to not be blown off and, and be stabilized, which would then cause our planet to start to become this habitable planet for species and life and chemical reactions to take place, which would start the process of forming life on the planet from this point. So the core, the atmosphere, magnetic field, the EM field, all comes into place, and the moon, and obviously the asteroid bombardment. So this stage is really important for really setting the foundations for what our planet became later on in its history. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth science.